Hi, I'm Joni Petrie and welcome to my YouTube channel. Well, today I want to talk about what it is in a billionaire's chart that you can see that indicates that they will be that wealthy. And I wanted to bring back a book I wrote from the year of 2008 called How to Make Money Using Astrology. And this book, actually, we revamped it. It got a facelift. It has a different co cover now. So look for it. It's a beautiful cover now. Look for it. You can find it on my website, by the way. You can find all of my books if you're interested. Go to galacticcenter.org. And while you're there, don't forget to sign up for my free newsletter. Get all of my information delivered to your email address. And check out my spiritual jewelry, which I have for sale that reminds us of who we are while we're here on planet Earth. And if you're interested in taking this to the next level, check out my school, my online university, which is universityofvedicastrology.com. So getting back to the interesting subject that I have for you today, on billionaires charts, it's really kind of simple. Now, one of the things that surprised me while I was studying all these different charts is Many of the astrology books tell you certain nakshatras that are extremely wealthy. Of course, they say Danishta, the richest one, Pura Falguni, wealthy. There are certain ones that they pick out that denotes wealth. But I found something really different than what the old scriptures pretty much said. After confirming with at least 10 to 15 different billionaires charts, which I'm going to discuss quite a few of them with you, what I found was the signs that were most prominent in most of the charts were Scorpio, number one, and then Taurus. And what's so interesting is that the nakshatra in Scorpio that's usually not confirmed as a wealthy nakshatra was the one I found most common in these charts. And that nakshatra is Jasta. And Jasta is the last 13 degrees and 20 minutes of the sign of Scorpio. So looking at that, why is Jasta so wealthy? All I have to say is it is affiliated with power, with some even say black magic. But I feel like it's the focus and manifestation. This is a very powerful nakshatra for manifesting your goals because you become laser focused. And I believe in the law of attraction. When you focus on something, you make it happen. And that's what I feel like this nakshatra is all about. So another thing about this nakshatra and this sign, Scorpio, is that there is a fixed star that is relative to wealth and money, and it's called Rigel. Rigel sits around 23 to 24 degrees of Taurus. And what I find is when you look for these fixed stars, you've got to have people that have planets really close to those within two degrees, no further than that. And when you have that, they can be conjunct in Taurus. So in other words, around 23 to 24 degrees of Taurus or 23 to 24 degrees of Scorpio. This is the placement that denotes great wealth. Now, I have definitely seen billionaires that do not have these place placements, so don't get depressed. But you'll see that these placements in many charts does bring about incredible wealth. Let me talk about some of the people that are in the book so you can get a heads up. Uh, very old, long time ago, but these are some of the multi-multi-millionaire billionaires of the past. Uh, Barbara Hutton, Doris Duke, Gloria Vanderbilt, and Christina Onassis. All of these were women who inherited incredible wealth from their family or 
as you can see, the son is usually involved and it's her father. So this you'll find, of course, the eighth house is the house that they all have major powerful planets in. The eighth house is the house of inheritance. It's money through other people. And don't forget the eighth house is relative to what? The eighth sign, Scorpio. So we're seeing this, this confluency of eight being the eighth house or the eighth sign, Scorpio. Now, here is some others that have degrees that I was talking about around that 23, 24 degrees of Taurus or Scorpio. And Andrew Carnegie is one, Ted Turner, Ross Perot, Andrew Carnegie, J.D. Rockefeller, the richest man of all time ever, if you put it into rel relative to the times and value, Bill Gates, Oprah Winfrey, and John Paul Getty. All right, that's pretty amazing. And remember, you're going to find this stuff always in Scorpio or Taurus. Now, Another thing is, I thought I might show you a chart, but just to give you reference of what we're looking for, besides just the sign, the nakshatra, the houses, the houses are imperative. And one thing I do want you to know is the second house is the house of our money that we earn, but the 11th house is the house that deals with large sums of mon money that come all at once. So that's why it's called the house of great gains. So it's not from paycheck to paycheck. It's like when you sell a property, it's just a large money that comes all at once. So that's the 11th house. And when you have a connection between the 11th house and the second house, this is a major major, what we call Donna yoga. And Donna means wealth producing. So it's bringing together the rulers of the second and the 11th. And the other aspect can be in terms of what a Donna yoga is, it's not only bringing together planets from the second to the 11th or connecting those two rulers from the second and the 11th. It's also can be any combination when you bring in planets that rule the triconal houses as well, such as the triconal houses are one, five, and nine. So if you have a planet that rules your ninth house and it sits with the planet that rules your first house, that's still considered a Donna Yoga. If you have the planet that rules the ninth house and it sits with the planet that rules the fifth house, that's also a Donna Yoga, meaning wealth producing. And whatever house they're in is where the wealth comes from. I think that's pretty astounding to think that. So in other words, since the first house is you primarily, it can actually mean the money's being brought to you. So that leaves me with a chart that I would like to bring up here just to give you an example so you don't have to be envisioning this in your head. <laughs> I thought I might bring up the, ch the chart of Andrew Carnegie. And yes, so let me scoot over and bring up the chart of Andrew Carnegie and go back. He's one of the richest men uh, from a long time ago. He built, he was one of the men that considered the builders of America. And back then there were not as many millionaire billionaires as we have today. So he was one of the few that came to America, building of America, and made it great, and he was mega, mega wealthy. So let's put up the chart of Andrew Carnegie and see what we can see according to the rules that we're just following. So one thing I want you to focus in on is, yes, his ascendant is Libra, but notice 
what's in his second house. In his second house, he has some really powerful planets, which are Sun, Mars, and Venus. And they're tied up with K2. So the nodes will bring expansion and wealth, even K2. When you have K2 conjunct benefics or a planet that's extremely strong in its own sign of rulership, it will expand it. It will expand the wealth, not take it away. So also, if you look at his second house, what do we have here? We have Venus, which rules Libra. Therefore, Venus rules the first house. I call that the chart ruler. So the chart ruler, Venus, rulership of Libra, goes to the second house, which is what? The house of money and finances. And we also see where Venus sits with Mars. Now, what's interesting about this Mars, it rules the second house. So we have the ruler of the second in the second conjunct the ruler of the first. That's a major Dhana Yoga bringing the money to him. All right. What about the sun in this combination? Notice what house the sun rules in this chart. It rules the 11th house. So if the sun rules the 11th house, we have a connection between the sun, ruler of the 11th, conjunct Mars, ruler of the second. Really powerful Donna Yogas. This is clear and easy to see the wealth in this man's chart. So another rule of thumb that I always teach my students to do is to always look at the chart from the moon as the ascendant, Chandra Lagna. So when we do this, we have his moon in Capricorn. Go figure, Capricorn is all about business, right? But when we make this, the moon the ascendant and you count around to where that Venus, Mars, Sun, K2 are, they're in the 11th house from the moon. And Mars is ruler of what? The 11th, in the 11th house. And it is with Venus, which actually rules the 10th house of work and career. So Venus, and actually the 11th house, did you know the re one of the reasons why it is a house of great gains, meaning the money that you bring in personally, large sums, because it is the second house from the 10th house, money you make from your career, that's the 11th house. So looking at Mars and the sun, and the sun, if you count from the moon, it's actually, let's see, it actually can bring in the eighth house, which many are conditioned to think the eighth house is a bad house, but it deals with money. Remember, it's the eighth sign, eighth house. So the sun, in terms of rulership, rules the eighth house but it sits in the 11th house of great gains. All of these planets here are telling us the great gains that this individual has achieved in life, which are definitely remarkable. Remarkable to see that. So uh, just by following the fruit, the few rules that I've given you here, which is connecting the second to the 11th, as well as looking at the 8th house, as well as looking at the nakshatras in the signs and the fixed star, Rigel. You've got a lot in your toolbox to find out if somebody is gonna be mega wealthy. There's many other things to look for, but I thought I might just give you a very clear and simple route. Now in my book, 
I have all the other means that you may want to look for to see if you are going to be a millionaire or a billionaire. So with that, I'd like to close. If you would like more information on me, sign up for my free newsletter, go to my website, which is galacticcenter.org. And don't forget, if you want to study with me, become a Vedic astrologer, go to my university website, which is universityofvedicastrology.com. Thank you.